Namaskar everyone. Welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to learn how you can analyze revenue from operations and other incomes, which in totality it makes total income of a company. So, what are the components of total income? Total income consists of these two elements. Number one is total revenue from operations and the second one is other income. Now let us look at what are the components of total revenue from operations and how you can classify it, how you can analyze this based on various parameters. So total revenue from operations equal to volume of sales into price of goods or services sold or rendered. Now you can split the revenue or you can classify the revenue in a geographical manner means geographical wise the revenue may be segmented. Secondly the total revenue from operations can be product wise means suppose if company sells various products so their revenue segment will include turnover from various products sold and there is also one thing that is business segment wise turnover so suppose a business has different different segments from which it earns so there from this source also you can analyze businesses total turnover of each segment and what are the components of other income so other income consists of interest income on bank deposits current investments fair value gain on investments measured at fair value through profit or loss realized gain on sale of investments and also there can be various other components of other income which we will be covering while we will be analyzing companies financial data companies profit and loss statement. So now let us take a look at a company's profit and loss statement. As you can see that this profit and loss statement is of company Jindal Steel and Power Limited. Let me just show you which company which company's profit and loss statement currently we are analyzing. So you can see that this is Jindal Steel and Power Limited. Now if you want to understand and analyze this company's total revenue from operations other income and total income. In that case, we know that we have two things. We have one statement called standalone statement and we have another statement called consolidated financial statement. So now what is the basic difference between standalone and consolidated is that standalone stands for the core business, the core business and consolidated stands for your core business plus business that you have generated from your joint ventures from your subsidiaries. It can be located in foreign countries as well as in your country as well. So standalone means if you just literally look at the word stand alone so that means it's solely alone your company's core business. It is like a nuclear family and console means it is like a joint family. So combination of all the businesses that you have that is consolidated and standalone means your main core business without any joint venture or subsidiaries or any holding companies. So now we will be looking at Jindal Steel and Power's 
standalone profit and loss statement. So friends, as you can see, we are now watching at, we are now looking at General Steel and Powers statement of profit and loss for the year ended 31st March 2021. This is particulars here in number one you can see revenue from operations and this is revenue from operations 37,089.41 crores versus okay this was on the year ended 31st March 2021 and just one year ago means the year ended 2020 as on that date company's total turnover that is not company's total turnover but company's revenue from operations was at 30,116.33 so if you just try to calculate that what is the revenue growth year on year on year on year basis what you can do is very simply you can analyze it 37089.41 minus 30116.33 the result divided by 31116.33 into 100 so at what growth rate what is the year on year growth of revenue from operations for this company is 23.15 percent so if you do 31116.33 plus 23.11 percent you will reach at this number So what is the company's year on year growth rate? Let us calculate once again for your understanding 37089.41 minus 30116.33 divided by 30116.33 into 100 so it is 23.5 one five two seven eight seven eight seven so year on year growth rate for this company's revenue from operations is twenty three point one five two seven percent so year on year general steel and powers Standalone revenue from operations has grown by 23.1527% Less you have GST recovered here of this amount So what is your actual revenue from operations is given here This is the actual revenue from operations for Jindal Steel and Power post recovery of GST so which figure among these and this you are going to consider in your analysis so this is how you can understand you can just do 33346.19 minus 38.36 plus 666.11 here you have this answer 33973.94 so in your analysis you should be considering this particular amount so this was your year on year revenue from operations growth before deduction of GST recovered now after deduction of this GST recovered you have this net revenue from operations so what is the year on gr year growth of net revenue from operations let us calculate once again so 33 346.19 minus 26 323.62 whole divided by 26 323.62 into 100 
so what is the growth rate you are coming at the growth rate is 26 point six seven seven eight so this is your year on year growth rate of turnover now let us look at this thing as well you can see after this less captive cells for own projects so that means you had some projects to work on this is your that small project you were working on and this is your JSPL Jindal Steel and Powers standalone business suppose you were setting up a small plant for that this much amount of captive cells for own project that means you sold steel to your own company for building a plant so this is why we are deducting the amount 38.36 crore rupees from this net revenue from operations now why it was not deducted before this it is because on standalone basis company has considered this as a part of net revenue from operations but as it is not sold to any external company as it is not you haven't received any revenue you haven't generated any revenue by selling it to any customer externally so it is like a inter segment transfer that, that is why this is the reason we are deducting this amount from this net revenue from operations after that you have other income of 666.11 crore rupees you are adding that with your net revenue from operations you are deducting this from the net revenue from operations and then you are coming up at you are arriving at total income so now as we discussed in our PPT that components of total income is total revenue from operations so we have understood what is total revenue from operations here and there was another component called other income there is you have got other income over here but as we discussed the components of total revenue from operations so these components can be categorized or subdivided geographically or product wise or business segment wise so we will be analyzing that how come you have arrived to this number to whom where how you have sold your products or services to your customers we are going to analyze that going forward when we analyze this note number 31 then we will have a complete clarity of what is the real picture behind this total figure so for now just remember these two figures over here which are written over here just remember this one figure 37 089.41 and 33 346.19 now let us look at our presentation once again as you guys have seen that components of other income includes interest income on bank deposits current investments fair value gain on investments measured at fair value through profit or loss realized gain on sale of investments so where you can get all these details of from where other income has actually arrived is if you go and read what is there in note number 32 you will get what are the components of this other income so now let us look at what is there in note number 31 note number 31 is here revenue from operations and this is on standalone basis notes to the standalone financial statements as at and 
for the year ended 31st March 2021. So now let us look at revenue from operations. You can see the year on year information is provided over here. Sale of products, finished goods, interdivisional transfer. Putting these two figures here, you get to this total. Now you had this amount, other operating revenue. So how this is a steel company, Jindal Steel and Power. So what is their main work is that they sell their finished goods, that is the steel to their customers. So sale of products, finished goods, they sold of this amount and they had some interdivisional transfer. Interdivisional transfer means suppose Jindal Steel and Power had a division called A and another division called B. So they transferred some of the products here and they transferred some of the products here. So this interdivisional transfer is actually a sum total of this entire amount. Now, as I just earlier mentioned that this is an interdivisional transfer and you haven't received money for the products that you have transferred to other division. You are supposed to actually sell these products to your customers and get money for that. But it has not happened over here. So we have to deduct this number from this. But you can see that they have added this number, right? But here if you look at, they have actually later on deducted this number from here. Right? You can see it is in bracket, that means it's negative there. Less interdivisional transfer, you can see it's same amount, 10, 10, 431.27, 431.27. So say they have deducted this amount here later on. Now, other operating income, they have these things from which they generated revenue. So their main work is sale of finished goods. This is their main job. They sell crude steel to their customers. Now who can be the customers of these steel products? They can be companies like Maruti Suzuki. They can be companies like Gothrej. They can be companies like Bajaj Auto. So in the manufacturing of this automobile, this four wheelers or two wheelers or any consumer durable products like fridge, AC, anything like that, for that they need steel products. So this is why their Jindal Steel and Power's actual job is to sell their finished goods to the customers and this is actually their business is. But while producing this kind of products, they also had some scrap steels in their factory. So what, do, what should they do with this scraps that they have got? They can sell it to some other companies who are looking for these scraps as their raw material. So Jindal Steel and Power can sell this scraps which was produced during the production of this finished steel. They have sold this. So this is other operating revenue. This is not a part of their actual core business of selling steel or finished steel or steel products to their customers. So what is the scrap sales over here? 69.87. Export incentives. They also export their products to other countries. Let's say they sell their steels to European countries where they have, this company has received some export incentives, let's say from government, like export subsidies and all those. So they have received this export incentive. Aviation income, similarly you have of this amount, provision, liability, 
and diminution in investment no longer required written back for this amount this provision or liability or diminution in investments no longer required was written back of 27.94 crore rupees so now what is this provision written back means suppose you sold your products to let's say maruti suzuki of an x amount let's say 100 crore rupees you sold 100 crore rupees worth of steel to maruti and they paid back you some money but they were not able to pay back let's say 50 crore rupees to you so you own the 50 crore rupees to maruti now in this financial year maruti has paid you back this amount so as a result you have written it back in your financial statements earlier you considered it that you may lose this money as maruti has not paid you and you made a provision for doubtful debts in your books of accounts now you are writing it back now there you have profit on sale or transfer of property plant and equipment so profit on sale or transfer of pp that means you had some let's say obsolete machineries which you have sold so you have if you have gained any profit then here it is insurance claim is of this amount now why this insurance claim should be a part of other operating income it is not your business to claim for your insurance right your job is to sell steel products so why come this insurance claim is written over here and it is a quite significant amount of 148.10 crore rupees so what does it actually stand for let us just take a look at this loss of profit or business interruption claim for dri means directly reduced iron plant at angle of rupees 126.10 crore and interim claim of 22 crore for damaged aircraft march 31st 2020 nil so here there was no insurance claim this year you can see that they have claimed this money and they have recovered back this money from insurance companies if you just add these figures you will arrive to this number and you have others also which is over here less interdivisional transfer this amount has now been deducted <coughs> you have got your subtotal of this amount then you have GST recovered after adding it back you have total revenue from operations of this amount so this same figure was given over here you can see this amount was given over here but then this GST you recovered so it is now deducted from it then you arrive at net revenue from operations and in your calculations further for calculation of profit after tax this amount only is considered and then what is other income so let us also look at that so this is total revenue from operations this amount but what is the net revenue from operations you deduct this gdp uh, this gst recovered and then you will arrive at this number which is your net revenue from operations now let us also before diving deep into the other incomes let us first dive deep into what are the components of this revenue from operations that you have generated revenue from contracts with customers revenue from contracts with customers disaggregated based on nature of products or services so if you look at companies businesses in management discussion and analysis as well as in the introduction part of company's profile 
you will find that the actual full name of this company is Jindal Steel and Power Limited. So steel and power company. This is a steel producing as well as a power producing company. So from iron and steel, see this is sale of products. So what are the main products that they sell? Iron and steel. Another thing that they sell is power. And they also have other, other thing over here which is of this amount. So yeah, just take a look at this one. If you look at this sale of products, so they have sold iron and steel worth of rupees this much. They have sold power of this much, others of this much. Right. So which amount is this? This one, 43 to 71.73. This amount is equal to this amount. Now, you also have got other operating revenues, which consist of 505.73 crore rupees. This amount from iron and steel is this much, power this much, others this much. So, totaling it, it is 505.73 crore rupees, which is of this amount. Then you have deducted this interdivisional transfer from this entire figure and you have got subtotal that is your revenue from operations. Then you have added back your GD GST recovered and you have arrived at total revenue from operations from this you have to deduct this GST recovered in order to get the net revenue from operations. So this is the disintegration of interdivisional transfer that took place in your company. So what are the main three segments? The company has iron and steel, the company has power and also others. Now revenue from contracts with customers disaggregated based on geography, revenue is recognized at a point in time. So, company has domestic segment and exports. That means this amount, entire amount, company has sold 23, uh, 22, 362.25 crore rupees worth of steel in India and company has exported 10,983.94 crores to other countries like Europe, America and many other countries. Reconciliation of gross revenue with revenue from contracts with customers. So how they have reconciled this amount? You can see the gross revenue was actually of this much amount but company has allowed discounts, rebate and commissions worth of rupees this much. So the net revenue recognized from contracts with customer is actually this much. And if you now look at other income of the company, it was worth of rupees this. So how company has arrived, how company has incurred this much of other income, which is not a part of company's revenue from operations, means this is not company's operating income. So while you will be calculating company's EBITDA, if you have gone through our previous video on what is EBITDA, how to calculate EBITDA and how to calculate and understand and interpret EV by EBITDA ratio, you must go through that video in order to understand what EBITDA is, how do you actually calculate company's EBITDA. So in the calculation of EBITDA, we do not consider other income as a part of EBITDA. So then how do you actually do we actually calculate EBITDA from revenue? Let us take a look at it once again. 
when we actually calculate company's EBITDA, if you try to calculate it from revenues, in that case, we consider this amount. We do not con consider this amount. We take this amount. We take this means we take company's revenue, then we take revenue from operations, then we take cost of materials consumed. We actually deduct this amount from this amount. Then we deduct purchase truck in trade. Then we also deduct changes in inventories of finished goods. Then we deduct employee benefit expense means salaries. Then we do not cons consider this thing, which is finance cost. Depreciation also we do not consider in our calculation and we deduct this amount. So if you just deduct this amount, this amount, this amount, this amount and this amount from this, you will actually arrive at companies EBITDA you will come arrive at companies EBITDA which means companies operating income so whatever money company earns from its actual operation that is called as EBITDA which is earning before see interest we haven't considered interest and this is finance cost that means it is interest we didn't consider tax tax is far below over here so we have not considered tax amount over here in our calculation depreciation and amortization see d a means depreciation and amortization expenses of this amount we have also ignored this amount so in the calculation EBITDA, we just considered this amount minus this 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 so here we haven't considered companies other income which is actually not company's core income means income from a company's core business as it is not a part of company's core business so we are least concerned about other income also but if you look at it in totality yes definitely it is an important component other income you cannot like completely deny it because it votes rupees 666.31 crore rupees and in the calculation of company's net profit or even company's EPS this amount is definitely considered and if you have other incomes good amount of other incomes then it will actually boost company's EPS and company's profit after tax but it doesn't impact on company's EBITDA so what are the components of company's other income it is fair value gain on non cumulative preference shares provision or liability no longer required were written back profit on sale of investments so none of this consists a part of company's core business Jindal Steel and Power's business is not to sell its investments its main work is to sell steel products and power so this is why this, this is a part of company's other income means income from company's non-operating sources. Alright, so this was company's revenue analysis and other income analysis and in totality total income analysis for Jindal Steel and Power on standalone basis. But what about console basis? Console basis means it is your core business plus console means your standalone business plus all other operations with holding companies, joint ventures, other subsidiaries, etc. So let us look at this in depth. So revenue from operations is of this amount. Less GST recovered this. So you have got your net revenue from operations. Then less captive sales for own projects this amount and other income of this amount 
you have got this total income right now let us look at what is actually behind these numbers see if you do not understand what is the real story behind these numbers you cannot really become an analyst you must understand what is happening behind these numbers otherwise there is no way you can become a good analyst so see it has been disintegrated over here first sell of products you have your finished goods you have your interdivisional transfers this is on console basis earlier it was on standalone basis you do not see much of changes because company standalone is quite significant uh, company standalone operations are quite significant and there is not much add on to it and there is this is why there is not so much of difference between companies standalone and companies console numbers here you can see it is same other operating income scrap sales export incentives aviation income provision liability no longer required profit on sale or transfer of pp insurance claim and others then less interdivisional transfer gst recovered so this is your total revenue from operations if you deduct this gst recovered from it you will get your net revenue from operations now let us look at it once again with more detail see on console basis your finished goods sales was this iron and steel your power segment this much others this much other operating revenues you have this three app figures iron and steel power others less interdivisional transfer iron and steel power others your domestic sales was this exports were of this amount gross revenue less discounts this is a part of assets and liabilities related to contracts with customers so we are not discussing it over here other incomes you have got your net gain on sale of investments includes measurement and miscellaneous income miscellaneous income there is a note includes 499.82 crore or aud australian dollars 94.08 million for the year ended 31st march 2021 net of restructuring expenses toward cancellation of a term facility granted by lenders to wcl as per the terms of the approved creditor scheme of agreement between wcl group jindal steel and power australia and lenders so this is a part of other income so if you combine this figure with this you will get company's total income now let us look at another company which is also from india steel sector but you will get a better view of company's turnover and other income from this company the name of this company is jindal sorry name is jsw steel so if you look at jsw steels standalone numbers then here you can see standalone statement of profit and loss here you have revenue from operations of this much there is nothing for fee for assignment of procurement contract government grant income you have not, none of this amounts over here so your total revenue from operations is this other income is this and for understanding total revenue from operations it is in note number 30 other income in 31 so let us go there revenue from operations stand alone you have sale of products domestic turnover this much export turnover this much 
and you have other operating revenues as we saw in case of general steel and power of this 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 amount you are arriving at this amount as you can see there is no interdivisional transfer over here so we haven't deducted it from here and here you have got your total revenue from operations now this company has presented their data in a very good way what they have done is they have shared their total revenue they have disintegrated their total revenue product wise so in our discussion we told you it can be geographical so in geographical jindal steel and power presented their number disintegrated their number geographically this company jsw steel has disintegrated than their number product wise here you can see product wise turnover so this company jsw steel sells various products same with jindal steel and power they also sell various products but in their annual report they haven't disintegrated the numbers and they haven't reported the numbers product wise they just mentioned this much from domestic turnover this much from export turnover but they have presented jsw uh, JS steel has presented their number like this also domestic turnover export turnover and product wise turnover which is better understandable for us now so we can at least comment to company that yes probably their corporate governance is little better than jspl because it is giving you much more clarity about what is actually happening product wise so this gives you a better picture i think for that i would give company an extra marks so they have ms slabs this is in volume just look at it this is in volume tons this is not in million tons this is just in ton and the value of the product that they have sold so ms slabs this much amount hot rolled coils or steel plates or sheets of this much amount it's quite significant you can see it is it consists of most of the numbers right it is the largest share of pie then you have got your galvanized coils or sheets of this amount cold rolls coils or sheets of this amount then still leads and blooms of this amount long rolled products of this amount iron ores of this amount others this amount so you have got a total revenue product wise over here if you look at it this amount is equivalent with this amount so these are other operating revenues so your total revenue from operation is this much this you can see india this much outside india this much so this is their sales in india this is outside india they have exported in other income section you have got this detail over here you can find this detail over here so now there is one little small thing but quite interesting for me which you guys can also do this annual report is quite interesting and their presentation is also because they have disclosed their numbers product wise so that means you can find out what is the price for this products So if you divide 238 crores by 75 0 to 0 you will get the price of this product per ton
it is of this value So this is the price of MS lab per ton. Thirty one thousand seven twenty four point eight rupees. Similarly, hot roll coils, which is a huge amount. If you want, you can analyze and understand what is the per ton amount. Means what is the price per ton for hot roll coils of this company? So if you just do 38601 on your calculator and multiply it by 1 crore, you will get a certain answer. You can divide it by 9044252. So you will arrive at this number 42 sorry 42 6 0 8 pardon this was 6 8 0 42 6 8 Zero. It was forty two six eight zero per ton. So the price of hot roll coils is forty two thousand six eight zero per ton. Then, like this, if you analyze all these numbers one by one, let us now analyze long rolled products as it is a big amount so 13935 multiplied by 1 crore divided by 3148 Zero nine five. You will get the price of rupees four four two six four point eight six. So you can see that the price of long roll product is more than the price of hot rolled coils which is steel plates and sheets and this is long roll product long roll product means and flat products means as it is written flat products means it is a sheet like that and long roll product means it is a coil like this so it is a coil like this So actually this is a long product, then it was rolled like this. So like that you can analyze what is their most expensive product what is the least expensive product in their product portfolio? Now what is the point? Why should we be even concerned about these things? See, if you have their price of raw material available, if you look at, there is a point called iron ores. If you calculate it, 
2188 multiplied by 1 crore divided by 4672224 it is 4682 9.94 you can see as i earlier mentioned 8 3 <coughs> 93 crore rupees <coughs> is your net profit so you can easily calculate company's product wise net profit if you just multiply 8393 with 1 crore then the amount you get if you multiply it by this and divide by this entire total you will get the profit for MS slabs, you will get the profit for hot roll coils, galvanized coils. So product wise total net profit you will get. So how to do it? We can do it like this. You just first add this numbers 75020 plus 9044252 plus 4933666 plus 1461853 plus 654.5 plus 3148095 plus 4672224 so you have got your volume so the total in turn would be a huge amount that is 1954-9418 if you divide it by 1 million you will get the production standalone production of 19.9 4 million tons or this is in million tons on standalone basis <clears throat> if you look at the real number which was 1954 nine four one eight so this was your total volume from production in ton which is one nine five four nine four one eight So now it's very simple that if you just do this divided by this into this one you will get the number. So let us do it 75020 divided by 19549 Four one eight. So what you are getting? 
सेवन फाइव जीरो टू जीरो डिवाइड बाय दिस अमाउंट इनटू एट थ्री नाइन थ्री क्रोस सो योर रिजल्ट इज थर्टी टू पॉइंट टू जीरो क्रोस from this business this is the company's net profit from this product company has earned this amount of net profit for hot roll coils what is company's net profit 9044252 divided by again this amount multiplied by 8393 so the net profit is net profit earned from the sale of hot roll coils or steel plate is 3882 point Eight nine crore. So this is a quite huge and significant number. So you can understand if companies hot roll coils, that means sales of hot roll coils, if it comes down, then this is going to be quite serious for the company. If you look at some other significant areas, let's say long roll products. so what you need to do is very simple just do 3148095 divided by 19549418 multiplied by 8393 you will get this number 1351.54 so guys you can understand now that this is company's most profitable segment as well as it sells its largest volume from this business of selling hot roll coils or steel plates or sheets and from long roll product it has also earned a quite significant amount of profit so if this business somehow gets hit at either this area or this area this company is going to suffer so this is how you can analyze company's revenue the same thing will happen for companies consolidated numbers just take a look at this companies consolidated numbers this is consolidated statement of profit and loss you can see again revenue from operations is given total revenue from operations is given other income is given so now let's look at note number 32 and 33 here you go you can see again this is your sale of products including shipping services now everything is given over here you can see revenue from operations of this company and then total revenue from operations here if you just scroll down below you will get the detail of it revenue from contracts with customers sale of products including shipping services other operating revenues 
total operating total revenue from operations India this much outside this much so this is confer number then you have product wise split over there product wise start over given over here but here the problem is that it is just the turnover given over here and there is no a volume of sales given over there over here so this is the console basis net profit 7873 crore rupees so now if you just divide if you just do 248 divided by this multiplied by this you will get on console basis how much net profit MS Labs has earned and hot rolled coils or steel plates or sheets. Let us just look at it. 28023 divided by 78059 <coughs> multiplied by 7873. So here this figure is quite interesting. Here the result has turned out to be 2, 8, 2, 6, point, 3, 8. Now again let us look at this figure. Let us just look at this. This is company's standalone basis performance. That was company's console basis performance. So what was their net profit earned from the sales of hot roll coils on standalone basis was 3882.89 crore rupees. And just remember this number 3882. And if you look at companies, console numbers, it is just this much, which is far less than the previous amount of Three eight eight two. Three eight eight two was on standalone basis, and this is in console basis. You can see this is in console basis. To the consolidated financial statements. So why this amount is so less? Why the profit amount is so less? Well the turnover is here 28023 and let us look at it once again. Then probably you may understand the differences and the reason behind it This is company standalone number. As on for the year ended 31st March 2021. You can see these numbers 38601. Why product wise turnover if you are looking at console number is less than this? You will find the answer to this while you will be analyzing each and every segment together. 
there may be some interdivisional transfers as well involved over here. For understanding this difference and reason behind this difference, you have to go through each and every joint ventures and subsidiaries numbers which will be available in the console basis numbers around this place. Here, if you deep dive into the joint ventures and subsidiaries and their performance, you will get an idea behind the differences in these numbers. So don't worry, we will be getting into it later on in our next videos. In our next sessions, which we will be releasing going forward in future there, we will be analyzing all these small small differences and why it takes place and everything. So you don't have to be worried about it. So this was about JSPL and general and this was about JSPL and this was about JSW steels. Similarly, we have also many other companies. This is TCS. Tata Consultancy Service. If you look at their standalone numbers, this is standalone statement of profit and loss. This is their revenue from operations and this is their other income. Revenue from operations, other income. And this is their total income. If you look, look at notes to accounts, So you will see revenue disintegration by the nature of service. Here we said business segment wise turnover. So it also means nature of service. They have consultancy services and they have sale of equipment and software license. So putting it together, this is their revenue. Here, if you deep dive into it, they have clearly written over here revenue disintegration by industry vertical uh, is as follows business segment wise turnover. So they have these segments or industry or business verticals. Look at this banking, financial services, and insurance. So they sell their services to banking industries, financial services firms and various other insurance companies. And what is their revenue from this sales of services to this particular industry is given over here. They also sell their software services to manufacturing industries, both this retail and consumer business this much, communication, media and technology of this much, others of this much. Revenue disintegration by geography is as follows. Year ended 31st March 
2021. Americas this much, Europe this much, India this much, others this much. So, looking at it, now you guys are having a clear understanding. Let's say, if banking and financial services goes into trouble, then this revenue may come down, right? Similarly, if banking and financial services business is performing well, if this particular industry is performing well, then this figure may go up. Manufacturing sector, if it performs well, this will go up. If manufacturing sector doesn't perform well, then this may go down. And you can see that this figure has gone down, right? Manufacturing has gone down. The retail and consumer business is almost similar with slight falling down in revenue. Communication, media and technology has grown. Others has also grown a little bit. So there is actually not too much of significant jump in the total revenue. If you now look at revenue disintegration by geography as follows, you will look at revenue from America has gone up, revenue from Europe has also gone up significantly, but India's revenue, revenue from Indian operations is not really performing well. It has actually come down. And for others, it has grown up a little bit. So, if you consider post-COVID situation, then you can see that post first lockdown, the revenue from American businesses has actually grown up. Revenue from European businesses has also performed well, but Indian business has not really done anything significant. And you can see India's business has actually calmed down, so it has not performed well. <clears throat> so if you remember, during 2016, a thing happened which is known as Brexit. At that time, TCS's European business was not really performing that well. If you do last 10 years analysis, you will see that European business was growing like that and it fell down and again it is like growing up. No, that is the wrong way to show you. So it was growing like that and during Brexit it came down and again it has gone up. Like that the entire thing has happened. So this is TCS's revenue disintegration and understanding of revenue. Now, if you want to look at other income, it is at not number 11. Let us look for not number 11, other income is given over here. So dividend income is recorded when the right to receive payment is established. Interest income is recognized using the effective interest method. Other income consists of the following. Interest income this much, dividend this, net gain or investments carried at fair value this, then net gain on disposal of profit, plant and equipment this, 
net gain or lease modification this net foreign exchange gain this rent income other income interest income which is this comprises interest on bank balance and bank deposits interest on financial assets carried at amortized cost this much interest on financial assets carried at fair value this through oci other interest including interest on tax refunds this much dividend income comprise dividends from subsidiaries this much amount so now you have a clear idea how tcs earns what is their geographical wise split of revenue what is their product wise disintegration or business wise disintegration of revenue now let us look at tcs's console performance this is tcs's console performance you can see revenue from operations this much other income this much total income this much now if you look at company's notes revenue recognition consultancy services sell up equipment and software license this much this is the other income interest income dividend income net gain on investments carried at fair value then you have continuation over here net gain on lease modification net foreign exchange gain rent income other income it's all given over there then here is the console basis geographical split over here america europe india others well this was all about tcs now let us look at hindustan unilever HUL's financial statement is actually quite interesting to look at. and alone statement of profit and loss income revenue from operations revenue from operations 45996 crore rupees other income 513 crore rupees total income 46509 now if you look at the notes then here you go revenue from operations sell of products this much other operating revenue income from services rendered commission income on consignment sales others including government grant scrap sales etc you can see all these things now let us look at segment wise revenue from operations home care they are earning this much amount from their home care business beauty and personal care they are earning this much of turnover 
food and refreshment this much others includes export infant and feminine care this much so this is here total revenue in other incomes they earning from bank deposits this much current investments this much others this much dividend from subsidiaries this much non current investments this much then fair value gain on investments measured at fair value through profit or loss this much now this includes realized gain on sale of investments of 52 crores this much this is your total income now let us look at hindustan universe Console numbers. This is consolidated statement of profit and loss. See, you can see revenue from operations this much. Other income this much, total income this much. But now let us look at notes to accounts. Segment wise revenue from operation home care this, beauty care, beauty and personal care, food and refreshment, others this much. Then you have same other incomes, all those stuffs given over here. Now why I am taking you through so much detail? What's the point of looking at this notes to accounts? Tell me, if let us say, let us say, any regulatory authority in India, let's say ICMR or any responsible authority, if they find that let's say they have their folk called lux, so. If any ABC regulatory authority finds out in their research that lux soap is injurious for your skin, it is not good for your skin, then the sales of their personal care product lux <coughs> would inevitably go down. So this would actually finally impact this amount. So this is why I am taking you through so much. Foods and refreshment. So in their food segment, they have one brand called Complan and they have one brand, brand called Hordex and they have acquired this Hordex from GSK. So if any authority, if any Regulatory authority finds out that Harlix is not good for health. If they find out any harmful material in Harlix, as laboratories found out that there is something wrong with the composition of Maggi back in 20, 2016, Nestle Maggi was a product of Nestle. Maggi was a product of Nestle and at that time the share price of Nestle just trembled down because the sale of Maggi drastically came down and it almost became zero for few months. After that as all those things resolved then slowly the sales of Maggi rose and then now again Maggi is the number one noodles in India. So this is why I am taking you through all this stuff one by one so that you understand the significance of it. They also sell various other products like infant products, feminine care products. In feminine care products they have products like V-Wash which they have acquired from GSK. So if something wrong happens over here or if any competitor enters the market and the sale of their this brands 
come down so what will happen this will definitely going to impact this number in turn the net profit will also go down so this is why you just don't look at a company's revenue only you must also analyze that from what are the revenue key revenue drivers of a company let's say hindustan unilever has their home care product let's say surf excel and it has a dominant market share beauty and personal care they have lux they have dove they have lakme so this kind of products and their market share is also too good their market share is also huge over here so there is not much opportunity to grow their business in this segment food and refreshment in food and re refreshment business they have one company called one brand called tetley green tea and in green tea there is actually quite a good opportunity to grow their business in that particular segment so going forward in future this can turn out to be one of the key revenue drivers for this company as you know horlicks and compline both are super super popular products brands of hindustan unilever so there is not much space for company to grow their business in this particular domain so probably going forward in future if the sales of tetley green tea goes up significantly in that case this will turn out to be one of the very important and greatest revenue driver for this company in other segment like infant products and feminine care products in india generally this kind of products actually pharmaceutical companies used to sell this kind of products but just look at it come products like v wash plus this kind of products which is personal hygiene or feminine care products which was not really earlier used by women in india now if women tend to increase the uses of these products because of various reason so this can also turn out to be a key revenue driver for this company so these are the basic revenue drivers if you can analyze and understand what is actually happening behind numbers what is the real story what is the real growth driver then you can actually make a financial model and there you can forecast company sales beforehand and that will make your investment decision worth it and you may be get into a profitable investment bet now what one simple thing you can do is that if you look at this number this number has grown over the last year same with this same with this same with this so company's entire revenue has grown but which particular segment has grown more significantly we must try to analyze that so if you look at company's home care product it has not grown that much significantly if you just calculate 13957 minus 13640 then divided by 13640 multiplied by 100 so this particular segment of the company has only grown by 2.32% percent. 2.3 2% so that means home care product the company hasn't seen a growth a significant growth in home care product the growth is only 2.32% year on year so this particular business segment has grown only by 2.32% shivosham beauty and personal care this particular segment has also not grown quite significantly 18038 minus 17488 divided by 
multiplied by 100, you will get only 3.14% of growth year on year. Now, if you look at food and refreshment segment of this particular company, you will see a huge growth. 13204 minus 7450 divided by 7450 multiplied by 100 it is a huge growth of 77 to 77.23% a fmcg company an fmcg company which is earning this huge amount of turnover every year for such a company having a growth of 77.23% in a particular business segment is quite phenomenal. But now why this food and refreshment segment has grown so significantly? The reason behind it, you must find it out in companies management discussion analysis or director's report or while you will be reading about the company's acquisitions and its joint ventures and other stuff there you will be finding the reason actual reason behind this huge jump of 77.23 percent in this particular segment now others yes this segment has also grown as you guys can see 1829 minus 1205 divided by 1205 into 100 it is 51.78 percent growth 51.78 percent growth so that means this particular segment of this company has grown up by 51% as a result of these two phenomenal growth these two main revenue drivers are food and refreshment and other segment this two segment has grown up like anything and what is the actual year-on-year -year growth in top line or in total revenue of the company let us find out 47028 minus 39783 divided by 39783 multiplied by 100 so company has grown up by company has grown its turnover by 18.21% which is quite phenomenal 18.21 percent growing your business increasing your turnover year on year from this almost 40,000 crore rupees to 47 point 47,000 crore rupees is quite huge 18.21 percent growth at this level is really really commendable and this is why investors run behind companies like Hindustan Unilever this is the reason this is the actual revenue driver why this growth has happened you couldn't have figured it out if you just looked at this number these two numbers were obviously given over here if you just look at this number 47028397287728 see the same numbers were given over here but just by looking at these two figures there is no way you can understand why this figure has gone up so for you guys that would be really really important if you go back and analyze the five last five year trend of this particular business segment at what CH year that is compounded annual growth rate this company has actually grown their turnover over the last five years now 
Now, we will be looking at our last example of Reliance Industries Limited. This is company's standalone profit and loss account. Here you can see this is financial statement standalone. Income, value of sale, income from services, value of sales and services revenue less GST recovered, revenue from operations, other income. So if you now go to company's notes to accounts, In company's notes to accounts, you can see revenue from operations, disaggregated revenue. This is also product wise revenue disintegration. You can see it. Oil to chemicals, this much. Oil and gas, this much. Retail and others, this much. Total value of sales, this much. Income from financial services, this. Income from other services given here. And other income, you can look at this table, bank deposits, debt instruments, interest on debt instruments that you have received, other financial assets measured at amortized cost and others, dividend income, other non-operating income, realized gain, unrealized gain, given over here. So this was for Reliance Industries Limited. Revenue from operations. But now you must be thinking that their oil to chemical business is so large. It is understandable. But retail business, they are showing their revenue from retail business is only 29 crore. And what is Reliance Geo? You guys must be thinking about it, right? This is why you should look at consolidated numbers. In consolidated numbers, you will get the track of all those things at one place. What is the amount of turnover company has incurred, company has generated from oil to chemical business, it is given over here. Oil and gas is given over here. Retail is given over here. Others is also given over here, but this is on standalone basis. So. Now you can understand that Reliance Industries, Retail Business and G Reliance Geo Business is a part of consolidated business. So now let's look at Reliance Geo's console numbers. This is Reliance Geo, Reliance Statement of Profit and Loss, Financial Statement Consolidated, Value of Sales income from services, value from sales and services revenue, less GST recovered, revenue from operations this much, other income, total income. Now let us look at notes to accounts. Here you can see this is the notes. Here look at it. Revenue from operations you have oil to chemical this much, oil and gas this much, retail, look at this hoofing amount, 133.935 crore, 1,33,935 crore rupees of sales they have been in cut, they have made, now, digital services is given, financial services is given, others is also given, now you must be wondering where is Reliance Geo's numbers we will be looking at it just wait for a minute other income you can see interest bank on the on bank deposits debt instruments other financial assets others dividend income non current income other non operating income uh, gain on 
financial assets it's all given over here now we were discussing about this particular thing just look at this number and remember this you have got 486 326 pro rupees of revenue net of GST so this is after deduction of GST now let us look at another thing once again this one was taken 486326 and you have another number 539238 which is value of sales and services before the reduction of GST. Now let us look at one small interesting thing. You guys must be still thinking where is Geo's number. So I am just going to take you there. So here is your answer, operating leading businesses and this is your answer. C. Retail. India's largest retailer by rich revenue and profitability, only Indian retailer to feature in the list of global powers of retailing. The revenue is given over here. <clears throat> now these figures are a little bit differing from what was mentioned in that number right so this is page number five remember page number five we were there now look at this number this is quite different right retail this amount but here the retail is written as this number 153 153 818 153 818 here you can see 133 935 so the difference is if you just deduct this figure the difference is 19 883 now let us look at it once again retail business is clear to you right now digital services through geo platforms limited reliance operates india's largest telecom network so digital business is 90000 crore rupees 90 287 crore rupees they are saying they are earning the revenue from digital services business but digital services business here surprisingly only of you can see how much it is only of 13691 crore rupees this is digital services revenue then you have financial services then you have others of 34440 so if you add this amount 13691 plus 34440 is your 48 one three one so still this amount is so less than this amount still it is around 40,000 crore rupees of shortfall then you have media and entertainment see there is no mentioning of it over here If you just 
add this revenue for now 153818 plus 90287 plus 5459 plus 320 Zero zero eight plus two one four zero. Total, it is five seven one seven one two. Still, there is some differences, right? So there may be some interdivisional transfers and. also this gst is included in those numbers which was mentioned over here so these figures are so high compared to this figure retail is 133935 and here they are showing the retail is 153813 the reason behind it may be because of the gst thing in digital services they are showing this amount and media and entertainment separately they are showing this amount but if you just look at this real number there is no mentioning of it differently of media business and entertainment business so digital services others you can put it together and if you eliminate the inter departmental transfers inter depart uh, segment transfer which was included in this figures and deduct the gst you will actually arrive at this numbers so never ever what i am trying to say is never ever get influenced or i wash by this flash numbers always you must dig inside you must dig into the number and find out what is the real picture behind these numbers so here in notes to accounts you can see post deduction of the gst net of gst the figure is only this much which was showing to be around 5 lakh 50000 crore rupees so these are some simple things without having much knowledge and deep insight behind the numbers you may get i washed and manipulated all of this is not intentional but definitely if you just looked at this flash numbers which was given over here and just invested on the basis of this numbers only then maybe your estimation your understanding your analysis could have completely gone wrong so you must always dig deep into the numbers and please do not get flooded by any brand or any one for that matter always analyze each and every number by yourself so that was all from my side now just a small exercise for all of you you can just do the simple thing total revenue growth trend analysis so you have let's say for any company let's say hul you have total revenue total revenue of let's say 10000 crore rupees and hul segment let's say home care home care is let's say 4000 crore rupees personal care let's say 3500 crore rupees health care and refreshment let's say 2000 crore rupees and others let's say 500 crore rupees
sorry. Yep, so the calculation is correct. Yeah, so this is suppose your total revenue, this is your segment wise revenue. So let's say it was in 2016, 17 something has happened, 18, 19, 20. So this is your 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So what you can do is let's say the entire revenue has grown like this. So what is the C a G R please find out by yourself what is the CAGR of this revenue growth year on year please find out this is how only you can become a good analyst second thing let's say this segment has gone up by an X amount this also has gone up by X amount X percentage X percentage it has grown now, okay, let us do just one simple trick. Suppose let's say the business has grown like this. This home care segment has grown at this rate. The personal care segment has grown at this rate. Let's say healthcare segment let's say has grown this way Find the CAGR of all these segments, the total as well as for each segment. Find out the CAGR of total revenue of Hindustan Unilever Limited and also find out the growth rate, the CAGR of each segment of this company. So now, if you do this kind of intensive analysis of any company, in that case, you will be you will able to understand which one, which company, uh, which segment is the key revenue driver for the company. Here you can see that if you just do a simple trend analysis, here healthcare segment, if you see, hasn't really grown that much in last six years here if you just look at it the personal care segment has not really grown up that much then who is the key revenue driver it is its healthcare segment and other segment 
these two segment has grown up like anything why these two segment has not grown up in so large probably the market is either saturated or probably they are facing huge competition in spite of having such a large volume of sales volume of turnover from these two segments probably the market is saturated or it's now very difficult to compete there or maybe they are the largest they have the largest share in the market so there is no way to grow their business in that particular two segments but these two segments are either they have entered into the segment newly or there is untapped opportunity in that area or there is least competition or probably you are a competition you are doing far better than your competitors and you are succeeding in these two segments like anything so these two are the main revenue drivers for this company you can understand it right now if you find the CAGR of this particular segment to be let us calculate what could be the CAGR for this particular segment The CAGR of this particular segment is 1.4. I have just calculated it in my calculator. Here the CAGR is 0.47. Here the CAGR is 11.29 Here the CAGR is 23.79 Here, CAGR of entire business is 5.19. So, who are the key revenue drivers? You can see healthcare segment and other segment. These two are the key revenue drivers of this entire company. Being, although it consists of such a small segment, only around 25% of entire revenue in 2016. Now, if you just look at it, these two segments, that is 3800 plus 1800, is now 41% of the total revenue. Here, it was only 25% now here if you calculate it it is 41.32 percent oh, I'm so sorry yeah so it is 41 point Three two percent of total revenue. <clears throat> so you can like that. You can analyze any company's number and its growth trend. So that was all for today's video. I hope that you have learned something new from us. And if you have learned something new, then please like our video share it with your friends and please subscribe to our channel we will see you in our next video thank you very much namaskar